Hi, welcome to Bad Movie Reviews. Get out! It's hideous. It's horrible. It's home. If recent pop culture fans know the Adams Family at all, they probably remember it as a 1960s TV show, a 2010 Broadway musical, or a set of 1990s movies directed by Barry Sonnenfeld. But the creepy, mysterious, and spooky family actually started life as a series of cartoons drawn by Charles Adams and published in the New Yorker between 1938 and 1988. The hook of the glossy new animated feature about the Macap family is that it returns to the look of those original Adams cartoons, capturing the tentacle train of Morticia's dress, Gomez's rotund figure, and Wednesday awful face. Yet even as animation veterans Conrad Fernan and Greg Tiernan hark back to the origins of the Adams family, they fail to capture the spirit that made the clan such a hit to begin with. Their take on the Adams Family is not a scream, it's a painfully generic kids film. Like most soft pedal children's movies, their Adams Family makes a vague gesture towards a meaningful life lesson. In this case, a timely message about the importance of recognizing people's humanity regardless of their differences. Unfortunately, the Adams Family is so bland, unfunny, and poorly structured that even the best intentions cannot elevate it. There are more than half a dozen subplots crammed into the film's 87-minute runtime. The Adams Family does not feel like a singular narrative so much as a series of Saturday morning cartoons spliced together. The high point of the season would no doubt be the one where Wednesday goes to junior high. But like most of the subplots in the Adams Family, Wednesday's storyline unceremoniously peters out. It's as if the film reaches its required runtime, then just gives up without resolving things. Another big reason the Adams Family winds up feeling like a Saturday morning cartoon is because of the flat, weightless look of its animation. The visual high point comes in the opening moments with a montage of Morticia's beauty routine that involves smearing her parents' ashes on herself as makeup. The rest of the film rarely matches that level of a ghoulish creativity. Apart from the occasional clever detail, like the way Wednesday pigtails loop into nooses, there isn't much personality in the way the characters are brought to life. The Adams Family looks more like a 1990s PC game than a big-budget feature. The focal performances are similarly lifeless. Few members of the impressively star-studded cast make any kind of impression. Isaac, Theron, and Moretz are clearly trying their best, but they cannot do much with a painfully unfunny script that relies heavily on cheap reference humor. Even when the jokes are not terrible, Fernand and Tiernan fail to create any kind of successful comedic timing. Only Jenny rises above the lackluster material to deliver a genuinely sin-stealing villainous turn. This is not her first animated role, but she makes an effective case that she should be a regular in the medium. She knows how to give a performance big enough to cut through her character's plasticity. To be fair, the Adams Family is not necessarily worse than a lot of the generic animated kids fairy that hits theaters these days. It just feels like a bigger disappointment than, say, The Secret Life of Pets 2, because other creators have done so much more with these characters. Though the film pulls its aesthetics from the original cartoons, The Addams Family is clearly a strategic attempt to reach a generation who were raised on the 1990s Sonnenfeld films, and now have kids of their own. But like Disney's live-action remakes of its animated classics, which target the same nostalgic audience, The Addams Family just serves as an argument for revisiting the originals instead. <laughs> 